Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Steph Souls Homes Podcast. This is episode 45. I know it's crazy. I keep looking back. You know, it's been over two years now, 45 episodes and counting. And it's just been the consistency and the support from a lot of the people who join us on the show. This show is all about real estate, specifically the ADU play. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a realtor that specializes in ADUs. And I bring on different experts to talk about different topics all around ADUs, but different strategies that can help you streamline the process because it is a lengthy process. You have to be informed and educating yourself is like first step. So today we have two special guests. We have my really good friend Cameron at ADU West Coast. For those of you who know, also I work with Cameron at ADU West Coast on a lot of our ADU projects. And then we also have Francie Franks uh, from Renify who will be talking to us about financing those have you know financing has been probably like the biggest question and the biggest hurdle when building adus so i'm super excited to have her come on and share how people are financing and funding these projects and then cameron's going to talk to us about some legislative updates that have happened like where are we at with adus what does the process look like and a lot of the common questions that most landlords or homeowners have so with that, I'll have them introduce themselves. We'll start off with Francie and then um, Cameron. Appreciate you having us on, Steph. It's exciting to kind of see all of the attraction and where ADUs are going because they are so popular these days. Um, I'll let Cameron say hi and then share a little bit about what Renify is doing. Yeah, thanks uh, for having us, Stephanie. Um, I'm Cameron. I'm a, par a partner in ADU West Coast. Um, I handle most of the sales and marketing um, for our company, but, uh, yeah, I do a lot of stuff with Stephanie. And as she mentioned, we work together on a lot of uh, her clients that are looking to build ADUs as well. Perfect. Thank uh, you guys. Yeah. We're excited to be here today. And for some context, I work on the partnership team at Renify. We are a dedicated renovation financing company. So just any type of renovation we can help with. We were started about five years ago, um, when our founder, Justin Goldman, mm -hmm had three young kids, a growing family, and wanted to update his home and went to the local bank and just realized he didn't have much equity to borrow against for the size of the project he needed to do, but he loved his neighborhood and wasn't ready to leave. So Justin, along with Lee Miller and Robert Shedd, founded Renify, partnering with credit unions to do the financing, and we enable homeowners to borrow against the after-renovation value of their home. So is where a traditional lender might offer you a HELOC up to 80 or 85% of the value of your home today. With Renify, you can borrow up to 90% of the after renovated value of your home. So leveraging some future equity, which is a really helpful tool for an ADU that's going to immediately increase your property value. Um, I think it, that's huge. Do you want to kind of elaborate a little bit more on maybe people don't understand what that really means? Like you can borrow up to how yep. much, you know, for the after repair value, meaning after the ADU is built, because a lot yep. of people have that question. Well, you know, I can get some sort of financing for it, but how much will they lend me based on how much it's going to be worth? And that's another difficult question too, right? Like, how are we coming up with the ARV value? How do you yep. guys determine that? <clears throat> yeah. So, you know, it's a multi-pronged process. Credit unions and banks today are really good at underwriting borrowers and the risk level so that they can determine how much they can lend to you. Renify is really good at renovating or underwriting the renovation. We kind of call ourselves the FICO score of a renovation. Mm -hmm. So when we see a project, we do some contractor due diligence to make sure everything's vetted with general contractors, license insurance, as well as a feasibility study of the project, making sure pricing's in line. And then an appraisal that does determine ultimately the future value of the property. So we'll take a look at the plans and the estimate for the project. And then a qualified appraiser who's well-versed in ADUs and comps will take a look and determine what the home would be worth as if that ADU was already on the lot. Um, and we do see, you know, an amazing um, return on investment with the ADUs are continuing to increase in value. Um, it, it ranges so much, whether it's a garage conversion or a new structure standalone, but I would say right now, average is probably an 80% return. Um, so if you kind of to walk through a general scenario there, Say you have a million dollar property that you just purchased with 20% down. So you have a mortgage balance of about 800,000. Most lenders would say, okay, you're topped out. You owe 80% on the property. You can't borrow any equity. If you have plans for an ADU, just to use kind of round numbers, let's call it 200,000 and it's gonna 
appraised really well. So now your property is going to be worth 1.2 million. You can now borrow up to 90% of that 1.2 million. So all of a sudden you have $250,000 plus of equity to take out of the property and finance your ADA with. Mm. Is that yeah, right? that's huge because a lot of banks usually give you a loan based on the current equity that you have. They won't give you, you know, they won't let you borrow against future value. And I think that's the big, the big key thing here. Yeah. So, um, you know, how have you successfully seen some of your clients leverage this tool and be able to um, build, you know, successfully yeah. and, and leverage that? Yeah. So we, we've financed hundreds of ADUs across California and growing in other states now, um, but they come to us with plans. We can do a quick kind of pre-qualification, make sure that the rates and payments are in line with what you're expecting. Biggest thing today is with a home equity product or a second mortgage, you don't have to refinance your first mortgage. So you can get a separate payment, um, kind of make sure hopefully it's in line with what you're predicting for rental income or however you intend to use the ADU. And then you apply through contact information, you know, we'll share, happy to have a conversation, kind of help you see what that's like. Um, and then in about 45 to 60 days, you have funds in hand to start your process with your builder. Awesome. So you guys talked about, and I'll probably need to connect with some of your appraisers, both Cameron and I, it's so hard. We know we have one good appraiser friend who really knows his stuff in ADUs, but there's, there's not a lot that understand how to value these, yep. these units um, and because there really are standalone homes and they should get more value than yep. what most appraisers give it. So that's good that you guys focus on appraisers, one that specialize in that. Mm -hmm. And then, so you talked about like what you guys look for, for the future AR to determine the future ARV, yeah. which is appraisals, the feasibility, yep. getting the estimates. What does the process look like for the pre-approval process? Like yeah. The initiation yep. of it? And one note on appraisals too. One thing to think about when you are appraising this, it, they're looking at the whole house. So when you go through this process, we always recommend homeowners, you know, make sure that the inside of the main home looks really nice. Or, you know, if there are some couple other renovations that you were planning to do there, this is a good opportunity to do it all at once. Because if you have a really dilapidated primary home and a brand new ADU, that doesn't quite make sense to the appraiser scenario. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And then pre-qualification, you know, pretty standard mortgage application process. We can, you know, take a look at your financial documents and income from the last two years and kind of get you a sense of what you might qualify for. And a huge benefit of California today that we're looking to expand, but in some cases we are able to count future rental income, which really offsets the qualification debt to income ratios that we're looking for. Got it. And this would be for one to four units, or you also do multifamily five units plus? So today this is for one unit. Um, we have traditional construction loan options when it gets into multi-unit and additional structures. Got it. Okay, great. Yeah, because that's one thing that we're definitely focusing on a lot more this year, only because they, they're they also understanding that it's a great strategy in, in multifamily, yeah. especially here in California. So um, with that, now I'll hand it over to Cameron, because a lot of what would you say, Francie, are some of the common questions when you're talking to a lot of these landlords or homeowners? I'm sure they're asking cost estimates, and I think that's what Cameron should probably go over with yes. us, right? Like, what would the, those common questions be? I already kind of know, but yeah. I'd like to hear from your end, too. Yeah, I mean, cost timeline is big, just what's realistic. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, if they're intending to rent, what that could look like. Yeah, I mean, I would I would say, um, you know, I think it's very smart. Like people come to me all the time. Right. And um, they get me on the phone. And I, first question I ask them, well, you know, what is your budget? And I think that's the most important because a lot of people want to build a twelve hundred square foot two story this and that. But the reality is most people are under one hundred fifty thousand as far as lending from at least what I see. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's with that, you're good for a garage conversion. So I think it's really important to narrow down your budget first and then we can talk about what type of ADU. Um, you know, I can just speak for us we're always going to be upfront and honest what the cost range is. So if someone asks me right away, we don't give a price per square foot. I think that's very misleading on what's included in that. And also if I gave a price per square foot, I mean, you're looking at anywhere from 280 all the way up to 500 uh, per square feet, because, you know, some of these units, like the smallest one we're building is 225 square feet. That's a very small space um, as far as build out. So obviously the price per square foot on that is going to be closer to the 450, 500, 
rather than a 1200 square foot ADU that we're building from the ground up. So I always narrow down budget, what type of ADU, and then I kind of guide people on that. Um, one thing I really like uh, about Renify as well is since it is a HELOC, um, we don't have to wait on the construction loan draws, right. which is nice because we are doing, uh, we work with a few different lenders and we are doing some construction loans right now. And it's not a big deal. It just tends to possibly uh, have a chance to slow it down to wait on the draw. So um, I do like the fact that it is a HELOC. And then also too, um, very important, it's a second. Uh, I know Renify does a second behind the first, which is also very important because most people are at you know a three or lower if they if they bought a house or refinanced in the last you know two years or so. So I think that's really really important. Yeah, that's huge. Um, anybody who's bought, I think, within the last two to four years is probably locked in at anything under five. You know, even three and a half. We saw even as low as two and a half. So for those people, it doesn't make sense for them to cash out refi. You know, for those of you thinking of building one and you're exploring financing options, everybody's opting for HELOC because it doesn't make much sense for you to cash out refinance out of a two and a half to four and a half percent interest rate to where we're at now, which is almost seven and a quarter and probably higher than that. Right. For some of these um, construction loans or other types of loans. The other thing that Cameron pointed out was the, the draws, right? That sometimes tends to delay the projects. So I think working with somebody like Renify, who's, who, who doesn't have to go through that and just has a more streamlined process. And it's kind of advocating for ADUs. Like you guys are understanding that it does have a lot of value and, and it, you guys are taking, I'm sure the income approach through the appraisals, the future ARV uh, based on the condition. And then pointing out like the primary home should also match that I think is huge. So there's a lot of things that you guys have talked about so far that I'm just like making note of for a lot of the investors who are looking to, to exercise this play. I don't think that your fix and flip people are they going to be ideal for this type of play either. So it's more of the long-term mm -hmm. investor who's looking at the strategy. Yeah. Right. Um, Cameron, did you want to touch on some of like the updates too that we've had recently? Cause I think that's another huge one. And I'd like to hear what Francie, how you guys would implement that. Cause I know one of the new legislation updates is like you can practically build like a junior ADU and an ADU on your single family home. So how would you guys do the future ARV on that? And you know, would you guys be able to lend on both projects, basically turning your single family into a triplex? Like I'd like to hear what that would look like, right? But but yeah, Cameron, you want to touch on that? Yeah. So um, number one, I'll start with uh, the ADU grant. I know that's a big thing. Um, mm -hmm. I think if you guys follow me, I've been posting to send letters to your local legislator. Um, that way we can um, try to get the budget or excuse me, try to get a, a certain amount of budget reserved for the grant. What happened was it was in the California state budget. Then a few weeks ago, um, whoever's in charge of it decided to pull that money out for the ADUs. And we actually got so many letters as of today, um, they're going to reserve 25 million. It's not the 50 we wanted, but at least we did some work and, you know, our community pulled together to send these letters and they listened to us, which I think is really cool. Cause a lot of times people complain about politics or about decisions that politicians make, but there's no action. So I was glad that, you know, you guys were all able to help us. Um, send our letters to the legislators and get that 25 million reserve. So that's number one. Um, as of now, like I said, we have the 25 million for the state grant. To find out information about that, go to calhafa.com and just search the ADU grant. Um, it'll tell you all the specifics there. So that's a big one. Hopefully we can get the 50 million reserved, another 25, but we'll see. Number two, um, I think, you know, there's a lot of confusion between SB9 and ADUs. And um, the city of Long Beach just came out uh, not recently or not too long ago with a description and basically an infograph of what SB9 entails. And I think it's very, very helpful. I think I wish most cities would do this, but essentially, uh, you know, Stephanie, you're right. You can build an ADU and an SB9 unit on a single family property and it'll it'll act as essentially a triplex. So I think that's huge. I think the more we understand these SB9 laws, um, you know, not every not every lot is going to be set up for it because you do need 40 percent of vacant on your lot. So it's not going to be every single property. But right. I do think there's a lot of opportunity. And um, if you have a lot or if you're an investor looking for lots, 
I think there's uh, some out there that you'll be able to find and we'll be able to split these. And I think that this is really going to help uh, with our housing problem in California. Um, that's the whole reason why the ADUs were started. And as you see legislation keep moving on, like 2025, they're going to leave up to the cities whether they want to keep the ADU rules or not. My gut is telling me they're probably going to come out with a new set statewide, but I don't see ADUs going anywhere. I see this um, becoming more and more popular, and I see the restrictions you know, becoming less and less restrictive to build. It's definitely going to be a common theme. I, I read that I think New York is now incentivizing homeowners with up to 125,000. I know mm -hmm. Miami passed their ordinance in like November. Um, I think they're allowed to build four, 400 to 800 square foot ADUs. They're mm -hmm. a little bit more restrictive, but they're trying to just be a little bit more ADU friendly in other states. Tennessee is another good one. Colorado, Arizona, and Nevada now in January. So it's like California is paving the wave. I don't I don't think that they're going to go anywhere. So people just have to get more used to them being around. They're not going anywhere. And I think as far as data, give it give or take a couple more years, three to five years, once we have a whole bunch being built, then now we can comp them. Now people will actually take them into consideration. It'll be like the new norm. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and then the other thing, too, is where I work. So I'm a realtor and I have a real estate team. And with realtors, the way the value proposition should be is that you have your clients that you and you have a team, right? We always talk about in real estate, we have our preferred lender, realtor, title rep, um, escrow officer, all of that. You should be thinking of ways of how to build an ADU team. You don't have to do it all, but you have to know who to direct your clients to. And that's another value add, right? So what I help uh, my clients with is we help them with the acquisition. We help them analyze their portfolio because I understand the ADU play. I'll bring someone like Cameron to the team. Now we analyze the portfolio. We also um, do a rental analysis because I do ADU management. And then we rinse and repeat the process. So I'm helping clients acquire, build, rent, rinse and repeat the strategy. And now they're a client for life, right? And now they're, they're, you, they're that's just a great way to create a referral network. And I think that's where... The missing link is with a lot of realtors that don't understand how to implement it or don't understand their way or where they fit in this whole thing, right? But it's it's a great value add. I've been able to successfully work with a lot of investors simply because I can analyze the portfolio. Cameron and I will do feasibility inspections for them as well, along with proposals and along with the rental analysis. So we're going above and beyond kind of packaging it up for them and showing them that it's doable now it's just a matter of like, okay, who are you going to work with, right? And making sure you vet the people that you're going to work with. And as Cameron said, we're super transparent with numbers. I think funding is step one, even probably before you get a feasibility inspection, to be honest. Like you should go talk to Renify, talk to your local bank, figure out your options. And once you know how much you're qualified for, then now you reverse engineer and you build based on that number. It's like get, buying a property, right? You go get pre, pre approved and, and then you buy based on that budget. And so starting there is like the best, the best thing to do. And then from there, you know, you reach out to uh, Francie, get the funding, then schedule an appointment with Cameron and I get the rest of the things in line. And then as far as time frame, what would you say, Cameron? Like I know here in California, most of them are garage conversions. With the combination of ground up, but a typical 400 square foot garage conversion in Long Beach, let's say, what would the time frames be? Yeah, so I would say because we do design build, so we do all the architecture, we do all the engineering, and we also manage the construction. Um, so I would I would say an average timeline for no matter what project is anywhere from 12 to 15 months. And um, I know some people gasp at that, but like, you know, we're the type of people that are just going to be upfront and honest because I'm not going to tell someone it's going to be six months and then we're in month 10 and they're like, hey, what's going on? You know, because you're dealing with the city, you're, de you're dealing with, uh, you know, uh, utility companies, too. Yeah. So you're dealing with people that aren't moving the fastest. Right. There's a lot of layers to go through. I mean, this is a big job. Like people just a lot of people think you can just go in and put flooring in a garage and like call it a day. We're good. <laughs> way more than that this is a straight right. up brand new construction for a new livable unit so there's a lot that goes into it there's a lot of layers there's a lot of inspections so people don't realize that that takes time and 
um, 12 to 15 months as usual. But as you mentioned, if you're getting separate electrical meters, just electrical, I mean, Southern California Edison right now is taking a month, month and a half. So add another month and a half before we can do our final inspection. And I think the most important thing is number one, working with people that have done ADUs before because they know the process. And then number two is just uh, being up front on timeline, cost, et cetera. And another thing I wanted to, to point out, you know, I'm sure Francie can kind of touch on this, but it's imperative to have an accurate bid. And there's always going to be underlining costs, right? There's always going to be stuff that comes up, but you want to be as accurate as possible because guess what? If you take 200000 out and you, you go with a company that's just bidding you to get the job and they're going to charge change owners and it costs 250000 well, hey, now we're stuck in the middle of a project with no money. And that's where it really, really gets bad. And that's why I really honed down because that's happened to me before. We've actually, someone hired us and I, I, you know, this was in the very beginning stages. I didn't verify their income or what loan they had. He told me he was going to sell his house, right, for X amount of money. Well, turns out, you know, COVID happened, didn't sell his house for what he wanted. He hired us to do the plans for a two bed, two bath, and he can only afford a garage conversion. So now, you know, we had to go back. And it was this huge ordeal. So I don't ever want that happening again. And Franz, you can kind of touch on, you know, maybe budgeting and all that and how important that is. Yeah. And that, that's really what we're looking to do as well. And that's why we're a dedicated renovation financing company. So we can help make sure it's you can feasibly get the project done for the budget you have allotted. Uh, we do also recommend adding in some contingency buffers so that you have some wiggle room because things do change along the way. Uh, so it's a really helpful process to kind of make sure it's going to be a smooth renovation because things change, even supply chain with COVID and everything, prices have been so volatile over the last couple of years. Um, and we're getting better and better at building these every day, which is exciting. Uh, yeah. Also, well, and, I, and I can give an example. So like, for yeah. example, if we're building an ADU, right, we don't know unless we start digging for our plumbing or underground sewer, how deep that actual line is, unless you get it scoped by a plumber. Well, in rare scenarios, we're doing two right now where it needs a sewer pump. Well, we don't include a sewer pump in our bid. And yeah. that's very clear. I, I go over that with people, but that can be an extra 5000 And if you're only allotted a certain amount, that could be a kind of a pretty big cost, you know? So, yeah, that's important. I think the more conversations you can have up front about financing, about your bid, kind of going through all the worst case scenarios is very helpful. Um, and I know, you know, we mentioned on like the pre-qualification process, even as you start to explore your financing options, if you have saved a certain number of budget, you can always supplement with a Renify loan or any other loan. I think that it really does help to, you know, if you want to split up funding with your cash, um, we can help kind of get you all the way there to make that project a reality. And we do, I know this was mentioned earlier in the show, but we do work with, with the Cal HFA grant. So if those become available, we can help get you access to those funds in addition to our financing. Perfect. And then one thing I wanted to ask you, um, what I think is really important, especially on the financing aspect, which is why I like your program. Um, a lot of times, you know, when we do design and engineering plus construction, well, there's not a lot of upfront cost in the very beginning, right? Just yeah. to get your plans through. So what I like about Renify is it's just like a HELOC. You only pay for the money that you pull. So for example, why would, I, if I have a 12 to 15 month project, why would I waste six to eight months paying all that interest on the full right. loan rather than just pulling, you know, the 20 K or whatever I need for the plan. So I think that's really important too, as far as mm -hmm. how your guys uh, breaks down, if that makes sense. Yeah. You pay as you need. And of course there's no prepayment penalties or refinancing. So if rates change in three to five years, you can always kind of reconfigure your loans to make it work for you. Yep. Yeah. That's key. And the fact that you guys work with Cal, Cal HFA because not a lot of lenders are even approved for it. So yeah, that's, I think that's great. Now, how can people connect with you too, if we wanted to schedule a call um, and, you know, Francie, how can they connect with you and Cameron? Yeah. And I'm happy to share information, but learn more at renify.com or Francie at renify.com or two emails. Feel free to get in touch. and We'll be quick to see if we can help with a scenario. Um, but renify.com, ultimately, we have great resources on our website, lots of learning articles you can kind of explore there. And you guys have a webinar, right? Like this week? Yeah, on Thursday. Yep. Yes. Okay. A financing webinar. Another one for any kind of builders, ADU experts. We're just kind of spreading the word. Awesome. Um, for me, I think the best is Instagram. Um, I post a lot of 
stuff every pretty much every day there. I'm the one that runs the account. So um, mm-hmm. if you want to go on there and just look at stuff, send me a message if you want to connect. And then uh, obviously we'll set up a phone call and then we'll go from there. And then also our website, um, similar to Renify, we have a ton of really good resources there. Everything from floor plans to different design styles, design boards we've made. Um, but yeah, just the feel free to check that you have coming up. Which What's is that? The catalog. Yeah, the catalog. We're going to come out with a catalog that's very easy that people can just choose, you know, simple designs for their garage conversion or backyard. I think the yeah, more that, that's going to be key to streamline the process and their decision yeah. making, too, because a lot of people, they really don't even know what they want half the time. It's like they want something built, but they don't have construction knowledge. They don't have appraisal knowledge. They don't have financing knowledge. Like there's a lot of things. They don't have architectural design knowledge, right? So yes. even down to the functionality of it, I think it's cool that you guys are going to have preset, you know, models along with the design, um, like the the finishes, because a lot of people don't know what they don't know. So it just makes it much easier for people not to change work orders, <laughs> you know, or change up things at the last hour. And, it, and then now that delays the process another month or two, and yep. you don't understand why. So it's all those little things that I think setting the expectation up front is how most of us, even realtors, do with our clients, right? It's playing out worst case scenario during the transaction so that once it comes down to having those tough conversations, it's not as hard. And then also, you know, if you give a good time frame, a reasonable one, and you meet those expectations, you kind of, you know, you don't want to ever overpromise and under deliver. So it's always good to be able to exceed those time frames. And then, you know, just have them have a good experience. So we're super transparent with that. I think uh, Cameron and I, you can schedule appointments with us. Definitely reach out to Francie first and figure out the funding option. And then we may have like an in-person event. I'd love to have you, Francie, as a speaker. I think it'd be great to either reach out to some of the homeowners, landlords, or realtors. And Cameron and I do a lot of meetups. If you guys go to adumeetups.com. You'll see all the meetups that we've done in the past. And if you guys want us to do one at your, you know, your office or whatever, we do um, also offer like webinars or, or in-person events. And I think we'll definitely have to have a follow-up conversation, but I do have to go because I have another episode. I'll be interviewing David from ADU University, and I'm curious to see what he has to say too. <laughs> so um Definitely reach out to them, guys. Follow them on Instagram, and I will go ahead and upload the full episode. Again, it's episode 45. Any closing thoughts, guys, before we head out? Thanks for having us, Stephanie. Excited to see if we can help answer questions. Yeah, Yeah. no, thanks for having us again. And, um, you know, hey, if you're thinking about building an ADU, whether it's us, whether it's Francie, um, definitely do your research and do your background checks and, and, you know, pick the right company that's for you. Like I said, whether that's us or somebody else, but make sure they're doing ADUs. I I see that all the time and make sure they're familiar with that. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Bet bet the information. All right, guys. Well, I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out. All right. See you later. Bye.